What's going on everyone? Welcome to the next park of the Japan Coaster Tour. Chad, where are we? Oh, uh, Universal Studios Japan. He forgot there for a second. Guys, we're at Universal Studios Japan. I've been wanting to go to this place for a while. I'm a big fan of Universal Parks and we are here. And that way in the distance is Flying Dinosaur and we're gonna take you guys there because this is their legendary signature flying roller coaster by B&M and we've had a chance to ride it. Yeah, yeah, it was fun, it was a good ride. It was good. Do you think, it's obviously, it's really early to tell because we've only had one ride. Do you think best flying coaster? Ooh, um, I definitely think it's the most unique flying coaster. I would say it's the most intense flying coaster. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it's crazy intense, guys. Like, I, I'm like graying out and like... I was... I could not believe yeah. how many positive G-forces there were and just uh, how much there was to the layout because when I thought it was over, it wasn't. It still had more inversions and stuff. Yeah, so it was... It's like the most screwed up flying coaster. Like, yeah, you, you got off it and you were like, that's jacked up. like, what is this ride even trying to do to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. So we're gonna get uh, close to there, but we're gonna talk about uh, some of the park in general uh, as we make our way over to Jurassic Park. So what you're kind of seeing over here is actually uh, the whole Minion area because Universal Studios Japan has the world's largest Minion themed land which pretty much their only competition is Universal Studios Hollywood. But uh, this area is actually like really neat. I, I was pretty impressed at how big it is. I mean, pretty much what you see over there is it, but it goes a decent far back there. And one thing we noticed, uh, the people here love minions. Oh yeah. And I mean, there's, it's a busy day, but that area is so crowded. I mean, I walked in there to go film, and it's crazy. The park in general was very crowded. Apparently, it's a national holiday. We yeah, yeah, we, we messed up. So last last year, we went to Groenland on national holiday. This yeah. year, we were going to Universal. It's always like, the we pick the worst parks ever to go okay. to on we national holiday. That the single rider lines are awesome. Yes. It only takes a couple minutes to get on a ride. We've been doing all day. We've ridden everything, basically. Right. So here's what we discovered. So if you've been to a Universal park, you know that they love their single rider lines. And so when we got here, we heard about the national National holiday and we're like okay do we want to go and get some fast passes then we quickly learned that's a bad idea because it's a really uh it's, it's just not a good deal uh it's really expensive yeah we also we're thinking that we were going to do two days here but i think we're just going to do we're, one. we're only going to do one yeah our original itinerary basically we built the whole schedule around uh flexibility so we could change things up if we uh wanted to and so we're going to be scheduled two days and we're saying you know we're good with one and we're feeling satisfied so uh, we're like okay well maybe we get a fast pass to make our one day really worth it and then we figured out that it's not unlimited rides if you get it is like maybe you can get like three five or seven and the minimum for like three skip the line passes is like a hundred dollars like the equivalent it's not worth it at all single rider line. yes so we've been using the single rider line it's totally worth it because every major attraction has a single rider line and we have been using the heck out of them and man it has saved us so much time we've been able to get on pretty much everything we wanted i i can't think of, is there what, what haven't we done i mean we've done everything the, the only thing that had a long wait was the hippogriff yeah we waited 50 minutes for the stupid hippogriff roller coaster ride yeah there was no single rider line uh so here we'll show you this ride a little bit so it does go, uh, it, it hugs the water side. It does not actually go over the water, but what you're gonna see here is the final turn. And uh, actually it's not the last inversion, but okay, so there it goes. Uh, this park is very similar to Universal Studios Florida. It has a lot of similar vibes. There you go, there's Flying Dino. Yeah. And then actually there's a Helix right here. And then it goes into one final inversion. I didn't even know about that last inversion, so I was like, what the heck? But this ride is cool. Uh, Islands of Adventure was originally, uh, it was speculated that this, this place would get uh, a flying dinosaur-like ride. Uh, and then, now we know that's not gonna happen. It's probably gonna be an intimate launch coaster. But it's kind of crazy to think that uh, there was at one point in time, you know, talk that this would be in Florida, but it, it's I, I'm glad they're going with something different this this thing is really cool But uh, I, I like that the parks. There's something unique at each one There was one thing I was kind of disappointed about this ride is there's not a lot of theming. There's not so here's the entrance 
and everything like some of the um, the area around it like it looks decent but the queue does not really look it's a bunch of switchbacks so here's the entrance actually and one thing I want to mention the Jurassic Park area is very nice it's not what I expected at all um, the Jurassic Park area is almost like a one narrow path so here right before we go in I'll just show you a little bit down here the music is so loud but it's such a good soundtrack I don't mind uh, anyway, so it's a very narrow area it just goes around here look right next to the entrance of flying dinosaur is Jurassic Park the ride and what's interesting about this boat ride is it's actually a mirrored version so instead of it dropping like over here into the splashdown it drops from over there into a splashdown it's completely flipped so uh, I thought that was interesting because I did not know about that at all and actually here goes flying dino Here. We're actually standing in the middle of the helix, so uh, right before I end out the vlog, I'll show you this. One thing that was kind of cool, though, while we wait for it, right in here, they actually uh, made like a, a bunch of, not animatronic dinos, but like uh, people that fit in these dino suits, and they're very realistic, and you could interact with them. I got some footage of it. You'll see them when I post it eventually, but it was so cool to see like these actual, it felt, they felt like real dinosaurs, so I was amazed by that. So, okay, here it goes. Alright, hey, you ready to ride for ride number two? 95 minutes. 95 minutes? Alright, we'll skip the line, right? The single line. single rider. <laughs> 95 minutes for single rider. 95 minutes? Okay, <laughs> but, but they've been overestimated yeah. every time. Yeah. I highly doubt this is a 95 minute wait for a single rider. So, we're gonna do it. We've only done it once. Chad got lucky. Uh, they put him in the front row. I got the second row. So we're both kind of hoping for something towards the back. So, alright, wish us luck. I don't think it'll be a 95 minute wait, but who knows? Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next vlog.